Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna look at an example of using our integration by parts formula to help us evaluate this indefinite integral or to find this antiderivative. So the example we're interested in here is finding the antiderivative of the function x times e to the x. And so we're gonna use our integration by parts formula and process here to do so. And if we were out in the wild, how do we know what integration technique to use? Well, I always refer to integration by parts as my last resort. So I try all the other integration techniques in my little uh, toolkit, and if none of those worked, well, then I would try integration by parts. And the reason is integration by parts is one of the longer and more time consuming methods that we'll discuss. So if there is an easier way to evaluate this integral, we wanna go with that way instead. So if we do want to use our integration by parts formula, we're gonna start by thinking of our integral of interest as already being in this form, u times the differential of v. We then have to identify those two pieces, u and dv. Once we have u and dv, we can use those to find the remaining pieces we need for our formula. From u, we'll be able to differentiate it and find du. And from dv, we'll be able to anti-differentiate it to find v. So our first step is identifying what our pieces u and dv are going to be at the end of this video. I'll give us a little tip for helping us make those choices. But for this example, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Let's go ahead and let the function x be our function u in our integration by parts formula. Then the leftover piece, e to the x times the differential of x would have to be our dv piece. All right, so we've identified u and dv. Now we need to use them to find du and v. So to go from u to du, we just take the derivative. So du over dx would just be the derivative of x with respect to x, but that's equal to one. And so to finish it off, we just clear that denominator for the derivative of u, right? u prime, we could also write in Leibniz notation as du over dx, that would be equal to one. But then we just multiply both sides by dx isolate that differential du is just equal to one times dx or just dx in this example. And so now to go from dv to v, think of this as the derivative of v and this as the antiderivative. Well, then we need to integrate e to the x dx, find the antiderivative of e to the x. And well, that function is equal to its own antiderivative. All right, so, so far we've identified all the pieces required for our integration by parts formula. Now let's go ahead and plug them in. Our integration by parts formula is gonna allow us to re-express this integral as the product of u and v minus this other integral, v times du. And the hope is this other integral that we end up rewriting our original integral in terms of is simpler and one that we can evaluate with a lot less uh, effort. So let's start with u times v. Well, that's just x times e to the x. And then we have to subtract away from that v times the differential of u. Well, v is e to the x, the differential of u is one times dx. Well, v times du would just end up being equal to e to the x times dx. And so now, using our integration by parts formula, we know our original indefinite integral is gonna be equal to the product of these two functions minus this other indefinite integral. And the idea is this other indefinite integral is much easier to evaluate. Right? The first piece does not require any integration. It's already given to us just from our integration by parts formula. And now we subtract away from that the antiderivative of e to the x. But as we just mentioned earlier, this function is equal to its own antiderivative. And then we can include that constant of integration c at this point. All right, so we have found our antiderivative using our integration by parts formula. But how do we know if this is correct? Well, we can always check if we have the correct antiderivative by differentiating it. If we take the derivative of our answer and it is the correct antiderivative, we should end up where we started. So let's go ahead and check real quick, just for fun. And we'll go through these steps very quickly. Checking our answer by differentiating, well, if we wanna take the derivative of that first piece of our antiderivative, we have to use the product rule. So the product rule says it's the derivative of the first function times the second plus the first function times the derivative of the second. Well, the derivative of the first function is the derivative of x, and that's equal to one. We multiply that by the second function, e to the x, and then our product rule says we have to add to this the first function x 
times the derivative of our second function. But our second function is e to the x, and it's equal to its own derivative. So now we have to differentiate the remaining pieces and add those to the derivative from our first piece. So we have to add or really subtract away the derivative of e to the x. But as we've said several times already, that function is equal to its own derivative. And then we have to add to that the derivative of the constant c, but the derivative of any constant is 0. So now what do we have left? 1 e to the x plus x e to the x minus e to the x. Well, the positive and negative e to the x's cancel each other out. And where did we end up at? Back at x times e to the x, where we started. So that just verifies that we do have the correct antiderivative. The right answer does come out of our integration by parts formula. So a couple things to note about the integration by parts formula and process that I want to talk about briefly is, um, well, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but when do we use integration by parts? Um, like I said, I usually think of it as my last resort, try everything else first, and if none of that is working for you, then go ahead and think about integration by parts. Another kind of uh, giveaway that you might try integration by parts is, well, is there a product of two functions involved in your integral? Again, look for other methods first, but if you can't identify any methods that will work and you do see that product, then you might want to give integration by parts a go. The other hard or tricky part about using this integration technique is making the right choice for u and dv. Sometimes if you make the wrong choice, the integral you end up with in the integration by parts formula is much more complicated and not one that you actually want to work with. So making that correct choice is going to be very, very useful when applying our integration by parts formula. But luckily, there is a nice little acronym that exists that helps us make our choice and set up our integration by parts formula. And so the acronym that is very useful for helping us identify the pieces we need for our integration by parts formula, it comes from the acronym called LIATE. And so the way this works is LIATE helps us make the choice for U in our integration by parts formula. And it's really describing a hierarchy of how you choose the function for U. The idea is the L in this acronym LIATE stands for logarithms or logarithmic functions. The I stands for inverse functions or inverse trig functions in particular. The A stands for algebraic functions. The T stands for trigonometric functions. And the E stands for exponential functions. And so the idea is if you decide that you want to try the integration by parts technique for a certain problem, the next step is to identify u and dv from the integral you are interested in. And the way you identify u is by going down this list. So do you have a logarithmic function involved in your integrand? If so, let that factor be your function u. Well, in our example here, there are no logarithms involved. So we move on to the next type of function in our hierarchy, inverse trig functions. Well, there's no inverse trig functions involved here, so we move down to the next one. That's when we hit algebraic functions. Basically, the way I always uh, recommend identifying an algebraic function is, well, look at these other four types of functions. If it's not one of those four types, well, then it's going to be an algebraic function. So that'll include your, your polynomials, your square root functions, and things like that. And well, here we see our integrand x times e to the x has a factor of x. That's our algebraic function. That's why we're going to make our choice for u, just x. The other factor involved in our integrand is e to the x. That's an exponential function that's at the bottom of our hierarchy here. Some other things to watch out for when using integration by parts, and we'll see this in some of our upcoming examples, is you may have to apply integration by parts multiple times. And the other thing we're going to have to watch out for is when we're doing this integration by parts, sometimes our original integral might show up through the second or third iteration and then we'll have to do some integral algebra to find our original integral or antiderivative. So don't be too worried if you have to use integration by parts multiple times or if your original integral shows up through the process. In this example, we're trying to evaluate the indefinite integral of the natural log of x. And so let's assume that we've decided that we want to use our integration by parts formula to help us find this antiderivative. And so the first step in using integration by parts is identifying those starting pieces, u and dv. And remember, our acronym LIATE can help us do just this. So our integrand is just a single function, the natural log of x. And LIATE helps us make the choice for u in our integration by parts formula up here. And so let's go ahead and go down our hierarchy. 
while at the top of our hierarchy are our logarithmic functions. We always want to set u equal to a logarithmic function if we have one in our integrand as a factor. And that's exactly what we have here. So u will be the natural log of x. And so what is dv going to be equal to? Well, there's not really anything left over here, but the differential of x. So dv is going to be equal to that differential of x, or you can think of it as 1 times the differential of x. Right? We always have to have that differential of x show up in our differential of v when setting things up. Well, now that we have u and dv, we can use those to find the remaining two pieces for our integration by parts formula. We need du and we need v. So we can take the derivative of the natural log of x to help us find du. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So du is going to be equal to that derivative 1 over x times the differential of x. Now we have to be careful and change gears here. To go from dv to v, we don't differentiate. We integrate or find the antiderivative. Remember, we can think of dv as 1 dx. That might help us find v. And the antiderivative of dx or of 1 is just x itself. So now we have our four pieces for our integration by parts formula. And so now we know that our original integral, the integral of the natural log of x, can now be expressed in terms of u times v. That's x times the natural log of x minus the antiderivative of v times du. Well, what is v times du going to look like? We take v, which is x, and multiply that by du, which is 1 over x times dx. But if we multiply 1 over x and x together, we get x over x, which simplifies to 1. But we still have that differential of x involved. So just plugging everything into our integration by parts formula gives us that our original integral, the integral of the natural log of x, is equal to x times the natural log of x minus the integral of the constant 1. So now to finish this off and find our antiderivative, we just need to evaluate this definite integral, the integral of 1, but the integral of 1 is just equal to x. So now we have our answer. The antiderivative of the natural log of x is equal to x times the natural log of x minus x. We won't take the time to do it in this example, but as we saw in our previous example, if we differentiate this, we should end up with the function we started with. And that is exactly what will happen here.